morning everybody another new day is here we got some stuff to do today some stuff to talk about it's gonna be a good trucking day I think we've made it through the last few warm days of the season here in Manitoba it was nice yesterday it was like 20 degrees that's like 60 I think Fahrenheit I don't know Fahrenheit uh, but it was nice and warm. It was t-shirt weather outside. And from the looks of the forecast, it's all headed down from here. Down, down, down to the dreaded season. The season that must not be named. No sun at all anymore now when we get to work. The sun is hiding from us. From what I heard, it's hiding in Australia. We'd like our sun back, please. And off we go. Time to go hook up to a flat roll type. Head north. But, 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 but my way out of here. We're doing really good for time. We're pretty early probably arrive to our destination about half an hour early this morning be there ready for them when they're ready for us they'd probably be back here around noon somewhere over here is a flat roll type for us to take I see this one here this blue one but I don't want this one but I'll have to take it I mean that is a nice one yes but it doesn't have the door in the front, so if I have a choice, I'm gonna take one with a door in the front. That's this one right up here. right now and I have nothing in my trailer I got halfway up and I got a phone call apparently the load's been cancelled for today maybe I'll go pick it up tomorrow so halfway up turned around I'm headed back now I'm not sure what's uh, on the agenda for when I get there but that nah, happens at least I would have been on time right no no take that back I would have been early Would have been waiting there i was on track to be about 15 minutes early by the time they called so i'd lost a little bit of time going around the city with the traffic i consider that on time within 15 minutes and you don't want to be too early some places you get there too early and they'll turn you away they'll like, get out of here we don't need you here yet and we're busy loading other trucks and we've got a small yard or something like that depending on the place where you go but uh this place is usually pretty good i go up there all the time the shippers know me i know the shippers they're great guys uh, I like them they're good to talk to and if I'm early I know where I can go park and be out of their way until they need me but for the most part they're usually usually ready for me earlier than uh, expected I've got a Jeep behind me okay he's making a left turn thank goodness man he was like six inches from my bumper for a while it doesn't really bother me because I'm like 75 feet up from that I'm way up here in the cab but it worries me for their sake because if I have to slam on the brakes say if a deer jumps out in front of me or something for whatever reason I gotta slam on the brakes like, 
I don't know if they would live through that. Like, they're gonna plow into the back of my trailer. I'm barely gonna feel it. I'll feel a little bit of a thump, and it'll push me forward a little bit, obviously. Like, but it's, it's not even gonna give me whiplash. Like, I'll, I'll probably just want to, oh, shoot, what was that? And look back and see a car crumpled to bits behind me, half underneath my trailer, you know? And uh, not very likely that they would live to tell the tale about that. That's what worries me. I don't want that to happen to me. Uh, I can't imagine. There you go. You see? I know how to get out of the truck properly. <laughs> okay, so I've just unhooked from uh, this roll tight that we're not going to need anymore. Set her down here nicely with all her empty friends. I've got to go pick up uh, some tankers. A Super B actually. So two trailers connected to each other. A Super B. Uh, from, I think it's on the north side of Winnipeg. It's going to be a bit of a tanker yanker for the rest of the day. Actually, I doubt this will take the rest of the day, but it is a new assignment anyways. Uh, let's get going. Sort of, uh, I already had like my mindset. Are you guys like this too? You already sort of, you've got your assignment, you know what you're supposed to be doing. You sort of get your mind set on it and you get in the zone. Like we're, we're headed this way. We're gonna pick this up, get back around this time. And then everything sort of whew, gets, the rug gets swept out from underneath your feet. And you sort of do a backflip and luckily we're landing on our feet and we're grabbing another, uh, grabbing another assignment right away. But. Not what I was expecting to be doing today, but the point is, we're still trucking, so at least there's that. I've got two tanks behind me. That makes me a super tanker yanker. Super B tanker yanker. So I'm hooked up. I gotta bring this just down the road, not very far. <laughs> they just need to move. So I had to back this out of where I picked it up there and uh, had to sort of do a u-turn so i had to back in like this and then come out like that so i got some good backing experience with super bees today i actually got the hang of it pretty well i think i got it pretty good there we go we're super trucking today Trucker Josh. <laughs> it's just empty, and it there wasn't any uh, hazmat in it. Uh, it's not used for that, so I don't gotta worry about any placards or anything. But I'm gonna have to back them in again where I'm uh, bringing them to, and then I have to separate them, and I have to bring the front one to a different part of the yard. And the rear one got to leave it where I, at the back somewhere. So we'll figure it out when I get there. But we'll be uh, we'll be practicing our backing skills again. <laughs> oh, look at this guy! Nice. That's kind of a narrow header. Wouldn't wouldn't farmers usually use a wider header? I don't know, I'm not a farmer. But I am a farmer on Farm Simulator 2020, or is it far? No, I got Farm Simulator uh, 2019. Oh, here comes Mr. Farmer. He wants to show you how much horsepower he has. All together now. Ooh, very impressive. gonna have to get a new oversized load sign though. This truck could go a lot faster, uh, but uh, company policy, we're all limited at what they say is 101 kilometers an hour, but my GPS says that it's 99 kilometers an hour, which is either way, it's about 60 to 62 miles per hour.
Okay, so I've got to separate these here and it's actually gonna be pretty easy. I don't have to back up the whole Super B here, which is uh, <laughs> kind of convenient for me. <laughs> I'm not the best at backing up Super Bs, but uh, I get the job done. I get the job done. One of these days I'll get to show you my uh, not so superior skills. <laughs> I don't do this every day, otherwise I'd be a little more confident with it, but I'm confident enough to tell you that Give me a spot to back it into, and I'll back it in there. I'll get it in there. I'm just not going to promise you how long it'll take. But I'll get it in there, okay? I'm getting better every time. I don't haul these every day. I haul these very rarely. So when I do, I really like the opportunity to practice so that I can master it. But it's, it's sort of pretty straightforward. You just sort of follow the trailers back. And this is how they're connected here. You see, this rear trailer is connected to the frame of the front trailer. There's no jeep in the middle or anything here there's no uh buggy in the middle here whatever you call that that the uh, pikes have that's why you can't back up a pike with two 53 foot trailers because they actually have a separate fifth wheel on a separate axle here that connects on a hitch to the front trailer so there's one two points of pivot or two pivot points here then on a super b there's only one pivot point on the rear trailer so one and two at the front two all together whereas on a pike there'd be three you guys get it And then there was one. So I just gotta pull this rear one around to the other side. Little itty bitty baby one. They both, they can't fit both the tanks in their loading area at the same time. So they'll fill this one up today. Then they can switch them out next time they want to fill that the front one and they'll reconnect them together and we'll take them somewhere else it, it's pretty pretty simple so i didn't know this super bees like the combination of trailers i was pulling there before they are as Canadian as hockey and maple syrup. You see them all the time up here. They're everywhere. Everybody's pulling Super Bs. Super Bs. Everyone knows what a Super B is. You can haul a lot more freight, a lot more weight. But apparently, they're not very common in the United States. That's That makes sense because I've never seen them down there. Apparently, you can uh, use them in Michigan for some reason. And... Uh, you can bring them into some U.S. states from Canada, but only at the legal weights of a regular trailer or something like that. I don't know. But you don't see them very often across the United States. So I was today years old when I learned that Super Bees are a Canadian thing. That's, that's something we do all the time. Cool. The more you know. I got a flatbed behind me now. We're gonna go pick up a little lumber. Almost where we dropped off that uh, Super B. I had to run back to the yard, grab a flatbed. And, uh, whoops, this is not my turn off yet. Not my turn off yet. There we go. We're gonna turn at the next one instead. That one's way better. This is a new road here. Must be. <laughs> Confusing me. But yeah, we gotta go pick up a load of lumber and bring it back to the yard. There's a driver waiting to take it to uh, Missouri. All right, I'm on my way home. Sorry to make you wait all the way till the end now to for our topic of discussion. Uh, I think I'm gonna name this vlog New Truck versus Used Truck, if I remember. I might call it something else, but uh, uh, the article I'm referring to today comes from trucknews.com. It's a Canadian truck news outlet. Uh, so it applies a little bit more to me, but I think it'll apply to everybody in general. Now, on October 19th, 
in their economy and equipment section, uh, there's an article called continuing, continuing to see truck prices increase or used truck, used truck prices increase. That, that's what they're calling it. So they're saying here, older trucks are selling for more money at the auctions. The company reports as owners hang on to equipment longer due to supply chain disruptions affecting new vehicles. They need to hire a little bit of an editor. <laughs> What's going on here? It's a couple of spelling and grammar errors here. Oh, well. Uh, <laughs> okay, it's, they say transportation equipment prices are hitting new record levels while medium earth moving or aerial vocational truck prices also continue to climb. Doug Olive says, senior vice president of uh, Richie Bros Auctions. For the quarter ending in September 30th, truck, that was the third quarter of 2021, truck tractors were fetching 17% more than the same period last year in Canada, with vocational trucks commanding a 23% premium. That lags the US increase of 46% and 35% respectively. So they've gone up even more in the US. New truck or used truck? Now we have fairly new equipment here that we uh, have for our highway drivers. Uh, fairly new uh, within the last couple of years. Uh, they got all the latest of the latest in them. And we, that's because we want uh, our highway drivers to have good reliable equipment when they're on the highway that's not gonna break down. That's as comfortable as possible and as fuel efficient as possible to save as much money as possible. Uh, for the city guys like me, one second. I'll show you my truck here. <laughs> yeah, old school, old school, old school. This is uh, uh, the other driver, my coworker. His truck is old school like ours, but it's in the shop right now. So he's driving one of our Western stars that we have. Let's go take a look. If you guys have been watching my channel for a few years, you'll remember when I was in a Western Star. The unit was 3080. I was in a Western Star for uh, about three years, just like this. This is actually unit 3081. Uh, these trucks are a little bit older already. Got a little bit of stone chips in there. One of our highway units. This is one of our uh, the older model of highway units that we have. They're slowly all being replaced with, uh, lately they've been buying Peterbilts. Like the one I drove just before I came off highway, that was a nice, nice Peterbilt. But this is like a highway tractor that has more of the bells and whistles. And our city trucks are old school. You'll probably notice that. It's because it's much cheaper to have these as city trucks. <sighs> Whew, it's getting a little cold out there already. So. These city trucks, uh, we have one new Kenworth. Here, I'll show you over here. One newer Kenworth day cab. And the rest are pretty much all older vehicles. Some of our regional trucks are like the Volvos that I used to drive. Those are, those are pretty new as well. I think it was, what, a 2013? No, 2014. Our highway trucks are all newer than that. But uh, I'm going to show you here. We have one newer Kenworth and I'll explain what I'm showing you here in a second oh the sun is gonna be right in our way here okay here we go here we go you ready it's a dark hole uh, and it's ours these trucks here from what I've done my research on a day cab like this runs for about a hundred and forty thousand dollars and it's just a day cab you don't make much money with a day cab. Day cabs are more of convenience, uh, running around the city, bringing loads here for the highway drivers. Uh, you make more money with your highway units, right? That's a lot of money to invest into a city unit. The city unit that I drive has long been paid off. And you know, I'm not in finances here or anything, so I don't want to speak out of turn here and uh, tell you any wrong information, but I, I'll tell you something I do know. $140,000 for this. And it's just a plain old Kenworth, right? Not Nothing too fancy or special about it, right? Nothing too fancy or special. It's a nice truck, but you know, it's pretty plain. It's a truck, it'll do the job. You could turn my truck into a, you could completely overhaul it, repaint everything, turn it into a brand new truck, plus overhaul the entire engine top to bottom, make that a whole brand new truck that's gonna last another 15 years for less than half the cost of buying one of these. 
So why would you know, why spend money on a brand new truck when you can just overhaul and restore an old truck for half the price, right? So that's sort of where uh, the market's at and sort of makes sense, right? And these city trucks, they're older, yeah, but we don't go very far. I mean, if the worst happens and you break down, you're not far away. It's not like you got to arrange a hotel room for me or anything. We'll just come pick me up and we'll bring it back to the shop and we'll get it fixed. But these trucks don't break down. That's the thing about older trucks. Older trucks don't break down because they're more reliable. They don't have all these new electronics and emission stuff in there. Uh, they last longer, they're more reliable, and they're a lot cheaper to keep going. So a lot of companies are just opting to keep their old equipment and just restore it. And, right? Can you blame them? It's a lot cheaper. That just doesn't work for if you run California, though. So if you run California, your truck's got to be new because they may, they, they work that into their laws there. So my truck would never run on California roads. Well, that's a long ways away from here. Why would I be way out in California with my day cab, right? So uh, the topic of conversation is, what do you prefer? You know, there's advantages to having new equipment, new trucks. That's why we have our highway trucks being like new, top, like top notch. And there's advantages to just restoring and using old equipment. What do you think is better? What, what's, what's your favorite way to do it? I guess that depends on the situation and where you are. If you're in California, obviously you don't have a choice. You have to have new equipment. But me, I like the old school trucks. You know, I, I wouldn't want a brand new truck like this. Uh, $140,000, you just get a plain truck. You can make, completely restore those old trucks and make them look mint. Like show truck worthy for half the price of that. So, yeah, the, the, the prices of trucks are going, everything's going up. I know, that's all I keep telling you guys. The prices are going up. Tires are going up. Fuel's going up. The overall price of the truck is going up. And I have a, a good buddy of mine who used to be a roofer. And uh, he's getting his roof redone. And we're talking about you know, shingles and stuff today. We we're on the phone talking. And uh, he told me uh, shingles as well. They're going up 50%. You know, the highest increase in one year, like ever. So it's not just trucking. It's everything. It's, it's the world we live in, right? You know, something's got to give. Something's got to give. After these last couple of years, we all knew it was going to happen, right? You can't shut the entire world down and then just start it up like that you know it, it's going to take a while for us to get the wheels turning on everything again the economy is going to take a while to rev back up and let's hope that we're moving towards that way uh, we've got a lot of catching up to do we're very very busy as is everybody else but uh eh? that's good right lots of work we'll be okay we'll catch up and you know what it'll be better than before I really hope so anyway. <laughs>